There's no doubt that lithium batteries are reactive, and it really doesn't take too much to make them release all their energy at once. This is a 2032 coin battery. Usually you'll find these in places like your key fob for your car or maybe little electronics or kids toys. It's rated for 0.7 watt hours. Not very much, but these aren't really made for heavy duty applications. I'm gonna zap this with 50,000 volts just so you can visualize what 0.7 watt hours looks like when it's released all of a sudden. The maximum cell voltage of this lithium cell is about 4.2 volts and this arc generator puts out about 50,000. So I'm pretty sure this meets the definition of overcharging a battery. So the high voltage arc generator started a chemical reaction between the positive and negative side of the battery and it released all of the stored energy all at once in the form of an explosion to make that nice little fireball. An example of a larger consumer lithium ion battery would be just a simple double A lithium ion battery. And the Slomo guys released an awesome video showing a 4.5 watt hour double A lithium battery being set off with a torch. And you can see that the explosion size is considerably bigger than the one that we had in our little arc chamber. So besides being really cool to see, there's two reasons why I showed you all these exploding lithium ion batteries. My first reason is to show you how much energy these batteries actually contain. And my second reason is to show how volatile they can be when they're damaged, overcharged, or overheated. So now I want to talk about the topic of this video, which is lithium ion batteries inside of EV cars and how to safely use them. So one thing I mentioned is this is not a tutorial video. This is not intended to be a tutorial on how to use lithium ion batteries. This is only for informative and entertainment purposes only. So our coin battery had 0.7 watt hours of energy. A typical cell phone will be about seven to 10 watt hours. This 18650 is about 10 to 15 watt hours. And this single cell from an EV battery pack is rated for a staggering 208 watt hours. And there'll be about 200 of these inside of that battery pack. So how do we use lithium ion batteries safely? I'm gonna walk you through a project I did recently where I integrated EV batteries into this briefcase to make a nice big power bank. So the first impression a lot of people have when they open up the suitcase is that they think it's a bomb and I'm sure I'm on some kind of watch list somewhere for making these kind of projects but in reality all that circuitry along the side is preventing this battery from becoming a safety issue. So here are some of the primary components that I would use in a project like this. First we have the BMS or the battery management system. This is kind of the heart of all the circuitry. It's in charge of monitoring the maximum and minimum cell voltages, as well as making sure that all the cells are of the same voltage during charging and discharging. This is called balancing. The next is a temperature controller and I set the max limit to about 60 degrees. And if it exceeds that value, it'll cut off the current from this battery pack until it reaches a minimum value, which is about 35 degrees uh, until it'll allow current to discharge again. Another component that I really like to install in my EV battery packs is just a backup charge controller and this just prevents overcharging from occurring causing a safety issue. Our last few components we'll use is a state of charge display to show us how much power is left in the pack. We use some high current relays for the output of this battery pack and we use a voltage converter with a built in current regulator to provide a constant voltage and current when charging as well as installing some fuses for safety. We'll install some higher current fuses right close to the battery and we'll install a lower current fuse on the outside that's easily accessible just in case one of our loads that we connect to this pack ends up shorting it we don't have to dig all the way into the battery pack to get the high current fuse replaced and lastly you're going to install an on off switch to allow you to turn off the battery pack when it's not in use so in general this is going to be all the components required to use the lithium ion battery safely these are pretty generic adjustable controllers and they'll do the job just fine but all the ev cars on the market will have circuits similar to this but they'll be designed specifically for the application now let's get into the battery module itself. So once the case is removed, you'll see there's four cells inside of here. Now these cells will be rated each for 4.2 volts, which is the same as like an 18650 or most lithium cells. The difference is, is the amount of capacity that these store. These cells are all wired together in a series parallel configuration. And I'm going to wire them all in series and connect my BMS at the same time, just so that I can make this ready to be put into a battery pack and incorporate my other circuits. As important as a lot of the circuits that I just went over are, having a proper protective casing is just as important. So I found this briefcase, I got a chunk out of it, and I designed a panel that could house an inverter with a couple USB plugs on it as well, and of course incorporate the on-off switch, the state of charge display, and a few extra ports just in case I wanted to expand it for future use. And now I just throw the circuits in, I adjust them appropriately, and we should be good to go.
So how long should we expect this battery to last from a full charge? So let's do a little bit of math to help us estimate how long this might last for. The inverter I installed is only rated for 150 watts. 150 watts isn't very much, but it fits the application I designed it for, which is my buddy's film production company. And it's for like charging laptops and batteries for the cameras, that kind of stuff. So the primary thing that this will be powering is his MacBook Pro, which was what he uses for a lot of his rendering and editing. And the wattage of the charger for his MacBook Pro is about 97 watts. We'll just call it 100 just for simplicity's sake. So let's just make the assumption that when he has his MacBook Pro plugged in, it's going to draw the full 100 watts the entire time it's plugged in. So in practical application, I wouldn't expect it to be pulling the full amount of current from the charger. I would only expect it to actually be pulling the full 100 watts when it's charging the battery and the processor is running a pretty heavy program. So that means that the estimated runtime they're about to calculate for this thing is going to be the minimum expected value. Okay, math time. So if this inverter is putting out 100 watts, that would be the same as saying that its output is 120 volts at about 0.83 amps. On the input side, the nominal voltage of this battery pack is going to be about 14 0.8 volts and in current I would expect it to draw when the inverter is running at 100 watts is about 6.76 amps. So the capacity of this battery pack inside is rated for 56.3 amp hours but the usual storage capacity of lithium ion batteries is usually going to be about 20% less than actually the maximum amp hour rating and this is because you never want to fully discharge a lithium ion battery because if you do you could actually make that battery useless and it won't be able to take a charge again. So 20% of 56.3 amp hours gives us about 45 amp hours. So we're gonna take that 45 amp hours and we're going to divide it by the 6.76 amp expected draw. And that would give us about six hours and 40 minutes of runtime. So additionally, we should also expect about another 10% ish drop in runtime just due to efficiency losses during the conversion from the voltage in the battery to the 120 volts coming out of the inverter. So that would constitute for about another 40 minutes of runtime lost and that would put us right about six hours for our estimated absolute minimum runtime I would expect from this thing when we're drawing 100 watts consistently. Now most loads won't actually draw 100 watts consistently even the laptop once the battery is fully charged all the power supply needs to do is just keep everything running inside the laptop itself so that would probably drop the amount of current draw from the power supply fairly considerably so I would realistically expect this to be able to run for about 8 to 10 hours to charging a laptop uh, trickle charging a, a battery for a camera something like that so overall i'm pretty sure this is going to do exactly what it needs to do for my buddy um, i think he's gonna be pretty happy with it and i hope this video provided you with some insight on how lithium ion batteries are typically used just a reminder that the information in this video isn't enough information for you to be able to do this project the theory i went over it was very broad and the project i did was quite specific there's still a lot more experience you need to gain and a lot more theory you need to learn before you'd be able to actually apply it and build yourself a battery pack out of lithium ion batteries, especially out of EV batteries, which can be fairly dangerous to play with. So if you have any ideas for any future projects you'd like to see me do, please leave it in the comment section below. And for those of you still watching, thank you so much for supporting my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, it would mean a lot if you did. And to everyone out there, stay creative. Thanks for watching, guys.